So in the Modern Warfare beta, we got a list of most of the weapons that are going to be in the final game. Now, we didn't get to use all of those weapons, but we did get to see what they were going to be, what they were going to look like, and what they are called. Now, based off of this list and based off of playing with the weapons, most of the weapons in this game have already been in previous Modern Warfare games. So what I thought I would do is go through every single weapon that was in the beta and talk about where they originally came from. What was the first Call of Duty that they were in and also the other call of duties that they were in as well mainly we are going to focus in this video on the modern warfare series but there's a couple of weapons that weren't in the modern warfare series that were in other games as well so that is what we are going to be talking about today this is the modern warfare weapons versus the original weapons from other modern warfare games so we're going to start out with the assault rifles and the first weapon we're looking at here is the m4a1 this is a weapon that's been around for a long time but as far as this game it was absolutely one of the strongest weapons in the beta with low recoil high damage and a really good fire rate at 833 rpm this was absolutely a force to be reckoned with now the first time we ever saw this weapon in a Call of Duty game was in Call of Duty 4, but it was not the M4A1, but rather the M4 Carbine. An interesting piece of trivia is that in the campaign, it was known as the M4A1, but in multiplayer, the M4 Carbine. And honestly, the stats are relatively similar in Call of Duty 4. Instead of 833 RPM, it's 857 RPM. The main difference though is stopping power was available in Call of Duty 4, which made it one less bullet to kill than it is in Call of Duty modern warfare in 2019 now after this we saw the m4a1 return in both call of duty modern warfare 2 and call of duty modern warfare 3 the next assault rifle we have here is the ak-47 and the ak in this game was probably my least favorite assault rifle it had a really slow fire rate of 562 rpm on top of that a lot of recoil and really for the amount of recoil i found it really didn't do that much damage but just as a comparison if we go to the first ever AK-47 in Call of Duty 4, its fire rate was 705 RPM, dealt more damage, and had much more controllable recoil. Another fun piece of trivia with the AK in Call of Duty 4, it actually dealt less damage at very long range when using a red dot sight, which is really weird. But of course, once again, this weapon does return in both Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. After this, we have the M13, and as far as this weapon goes, we've had a lot of M4s, M16s, M14s, MP5s, but we've never had an M13 before in a Call of Duty game. And as far as this weapon went, it's actually pretty interesting, because for an assault rifle, it has an incredibly fast fire rate at 907 RPM and relatively low recoil. The only problem with this weapon is it really doesn't deal a lot of damage but it shoots really fast to make up for that the next AR we have is the FR556. This used to be called the FAMAS and is a burst action assault rifle. The fire rate of this one with the burst delay included is 463 RPM, which seems slow, but you gotta remember that's with the burst delay in there. It's much faster than that just in between the bursts. Now, this weapon does really high damage. You can very frequently get one burst kills if you hit all three bullets and is good, just like it was originally in Modern Warfare 2. Now, Modern Warfare for two it actually had a bit faster of a fire rate at 477 rpm the main difference was in modern warfare 2 the burst itself was actually faster and on top of that you could kill people in two bullets which actually made it possible more frequently to get those one burst kills both games this is an incredibly powerful weapon and this is actually the only other modern warfare game to have this weapon it was actually supposed to be in modern warfare 3 but was then later replaced by the type 95 after this we have the odin this is a brand new weapon in call of duty modern warfare a very very slow firing high damage weapon i remember this weapon having a little less recoil but it seems in the beta they kind of up that a little bit it's a decent weapon but by no means would i say it's one of the best in the game there is certain attachments you can use that make it really good and almost like a sniper but we'll talk about that in a future video after this we got the kilo 141 this is a brand new weapon in the game we haven't seen it used before but a lot of people are comparing it to the acr for modern warfare 2 we don't really know that for sure yet though because we haven't been able to actually use the weapon the next weapon we have here is the fal or the foul it's a semi-automatic assault rifle and the only other modern warfare game to actually have this weapon was modern warfare 2 it's actually a pretty decent weapon with a fire 
fire rate of 759 RPM, but unfortunately, this wasn't a weapon that we were able to use in the Modern Warfare beta. Then the final assault rifle we couldn't use in Modern Warfare was the FN SCAR 17S. This is a fan favorite weapon, people always love the SCAR, and its original version was actually in Modern Warfare 2 as the SCAR H. It had a slow fire rate at 645 RPM, but dealt really high damage and relatively low recoil for the amount of damage it did. This was also brought back in Modern Warfare 3, but not as the SCAR H, but rather the SCAR L. Moving on to the SMGs, the first SMG is the MP5, and personally, out of any of the weapons in the game, this weapon felt most like the original. So, this weapon had a fire rate of 811 RPM, dealt really good damage, had very low recoil for an SMG, I really enjoyed it in the beta. Its original was from Call of Duty 4 and had a fire rate of 800 RPM, very, very similar. Once again, with low recoil and dealt really good damage. Like I said, this weapon felt a lot like the original, and like like I said before with other weapons, this weapon was brought back not in Modern Warfare 2, but only in Modern Warfare 3. The next weapon we have here is the MP7. This is an interesting weapon because it has an incredibly fast fire rate with lowish damage but very low recoil. This weapon has an incredibly fast fire rate of 975 RPM, and compared to its original in Modern Warfare 3, it's actually a better fire rate. In Modern Warfare 3, its fire rate was 895 RPM, which was still really good but you could step it up with rapid fire in that game as well. In both games, it's an incredibly good weapon and definitely one of the fan favorites. The next weapon we have is the AUG. Now, this one is an SMG, and it was kind of like a middle of the road on everything. It wasn't really the best SMG, but by no means was it bad. It had a fire rate of 769 RPM and dealt middle of the road damage, but the interesting thing is, is that in the Modern Warfare games, the only other game to have an AUG was Modern Warfare 2, and it wasn't an SMG, it was an LMG, the AUG H-Bar, which because it was an LMG, of course, made it a very, very different weapon. Now, moving on to the SMGs that we couldn't actually use, the first one we got here is the P90. Now, this is a weapon that was originally in Call of Duty 4 with a fire rate of 923 RPM, so incredibly fast fire rate with a large magazine, but a little bit more recoil than some of the other SMGs. Now, this is one of the few weapons that was in Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, and Modern Warfare 3. This gun has been in every single Modern Warfare game. The next one we have here is the PP-19 Bison, which once again we weren't able to use, and the only game to ever have this one or something similar to it was Modern Warfare 3. It was called the PP-90 M1. It was very similar, had a very fast fire rate at 1016, and the only other game to actually have the Bison itself was Call of Duty Ghost. The final SMG that we have is the Mini Uzi, and the way I remember this one was in Call of Duty 4, it was kind of like the trolley gun. It was the gun that really wasn't that good, but a lot of fun to use. It had a fire rate of 952 RPM, which meant that it shot really, really quick. It's just other stats like range were not very good. This weapon was also found in Modern Warfare 2 as well. Now, the shotguns are probably the weirdest because out of all of the shotguns, none of them have been seen before in a Modern Warfare game. The first one we got is the Model 680. It's a semi-automatic shotgun. Closest similarity would probably be the Remington from Black Ops 2. After that, we've got the 725, which is an over-under breakneck shotgun. The only thing we've seen similar to this is the Olympia from Black Ops. After this, we've got the R9-0 shotgun, which is a rapid-firing double-barrel shotgun. We've never seen this before in a Call of Duty game. And then finally, the Origin 12. And oddly, the closest weapon we've seen to this is the Haymaker 12 from Black Ops 3. Moving on to the LMGs, the first one we have here is the M91. Now, oddly, this gun has never been in a Call of Duty game before, which really surprised me because it felt so familiar. Now, the thing with the M91 is it was probably one of the best weapons in the beta that maybe a lot of people didn't actually use. Yes, you move slow with it, the aim down sights was slow, but with the right attachments, it was really good. It was like a three to four bullet kill with a 675 RPM fire rate. Honestly, like I said, one of my favorite weapons in the beta. The next LMG that we have is called the SA-87. This one is basically a worse version of the M91. Very similar stat-wise, except for the fire rate and magazine size. The fire rate is only 613 RPM, yet it does the same damage and has more recoil than the M91. Now, we have actually seen this weapon back in Modern Warfare 2 as the L86 LSW, and in Modern Warfare 2, it actually had a fire rate of 800 RPM, so as you can clearly tell, it was much, much better in that game. Now, this gun was also in Modern Warfare 3 as well. 
The next LMG is called the PKM, and the only other time we've actually seen this is as a DLC weapon or supply drop weapon within Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. The final LMG is an old one, the MG34, and this one we've seen in different Call of Duty games, but the only time we've seen it in an Infinity Ward game was actually in their very first game, Call of Duty 1. That was the only time we saw this. Moving on to the Marksman Rifles, the first one we've got is the EBR-14, aka the M14, and in the beta, this weapon had a fire rate of about 300 RPM, was either a 2 or a 1 bullet kill if you got a headshot, and the interesting thing about this is, one, it had a lot of recoil, and 300 RPM for an M14 is relatively low in Call of Duty games. For example, the first game that the M14 was actually in was Call of Duty 4, and it had a fire rate of 625 RPM, and much less recoil than it did in the beta for Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now, on top of all of this, this weapon was also in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. The next one we have is the MK2 Carbine. This is a lever action rifle, and the interesting thing about this one is it's kind of similar to the M14, where it's a two-shot kill to the body or a one-shot kill to the neck or head. However, this weapon has a really slow fire rate of about 100 RPM, so hitting your headshots is incredibly important with this thing and just can't quite keep up to the other weapon weapons in this game, even though it's a lot of fun to use. And then the final marksman rifle we have is the Car 98 k This weapon has never been in a Modern Warfare game before, but once again was in Infinity Ward's first game, Call of Duty 1 or United Offensive. Moving on to the final set of primary weapons, the sniper rifles, the first one we have here is the AX-50, and you may have thought that this one was never really in a Modern Warfare game before, but it was in Modern Warfare 3 as the AS-50. Now this weapon is your typical 50 cal sniper rifle. In Modern Warfare 3, it had a fire rate of 200 RPM, which is actually pretty quick for a sniper rifle, uh, and isn't that quick in this Modern Warfare game. But, the one thing I will say is, based off of everything I've seen, I have never really gotten a hit marker with this weapon, unless you're playing Ground War, and they are way off in the distance. If they are within, like, 75 meters, it seems to always be a one-shot kill with this weapon. The next weapon we have is the Dragonov, and this one was interesting because I thought this one would be a marksman rifle, but it's not. It's a sniper rifle. It is semi-automatic, though. The first time we saw this weapon was back in Call of Duty 4, and it actually didn't have a fire rate cap, so you could shoot it as fast as you want, but it had a lot of recoil. It was a two-shot kill to the body, one-shot kill to the neck and head. Um, now, this weapon was also brought back in Modern Warfare 3 as well. The final sniper rifle we have is the HDR. This is a brand new sniper rifle to Modern Warfare and has never been in a Modern Warfare game before. Moving on to secondary weapons with pistols, the first one we got here is the 50GS. Now, this is, of course, the Desert Eagle, and the cool thing about this game is that if you shoot your enemy in the head, it's a one-shot kill, where in the body, it's two. We've never had that before where the Deagle was a one-shot kill to the head. However, the Deagle has been in every single Modern Warfare game, starting out with Call of Duty 4. Now, the one thing you may have forgot about Call of Duty 4 is at the very beginning, the Deagle actually didn't have a fire rate cap, so you could shoot it as fast as you want. However, later on, they eventually changed the fire rate cap to 625 RPM, which is still much, much faster than it is in the Modern Warfare beta. And like I said before, the Deagle was once again brought back in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. The next pistol we have here is the M19. This one has actually never been in a Call of Duty game before, but we got to use this one a lot, especially if you played 2v2. There's nothing really else to say other than this weapon kind of sucks. It was made better in the beta than the alpha, but still it doesn't really shoot very fast, it doesn't deal a lot of damage, and it has a lot of recoil. Now, you may be confusing this weapon with the 1911, which we weren't able to use in the beta, but was a weapon that we could use back in Call of Duty 4. Now, this weapon was known as the M1911, and was your just run-of-the-mill pistol, was like a 3-4 to four bullet kill, with a same fire rate as the Deagle, the 625 RPM. Now, the next pistol that was in the beta that we've never seen before in a Call of Duty game is the X16. There's really not much at this point I can say about the weapon. However, the last weapon is definitely a fan favorite, and of course, that is the 357 Magnum. Now, we've never had a 357 Magnum in a Modern Warfare game, but we have had the 44 Magnum starting out in Modern Warfare 2. This was actually a very similar weapon to the Deagle, however, it was of course a revolver. Similarly, this weapon was brought back in Modern Warfare 3. 
Now, interestingly enough, as of right now, there are no machine pistols in Modern Warfare. Whether they'll be implemented in the final game, I don't know. But as of right now, I haven't seen any of them. Now, the final class of weapons we have is the launchers. So the two that we could use were, first of all, the Pila. This is a new launcher, has never been in a Call of Duty game before. The second of which is the Strela, which has never been in a Modern Warfare game before. But the second two that we can't use are actually very familiar. The first of which is the RPG. This is a weapon that was actually a perk in Call of Duty 4. On top of that, in Modern Warfare 2, it was brought back as a weapon, and in Modern Warfare 3, same kind of thing. Now, the interesting one, the final one, is called the Joker, and I'm kind of wondering if they called it that just because literally it was a joke back in Modern Warfare 2, but this one was actually, you may not know this, in Call of Duty 4, but only in the campaign, but was brought back in multiplayer in Modern Warfare 2. This weapon would shoot a rocket way up in the air and drop down with a massive explosion. The one thing you may remember remember it from is the javelin glitch where you could basically explode an entire room that you're in once again this was another weapon that was brought back in modern warfare 3 so that is the final comparison that is every weapon that was in the beta compared with the original weapons hopefully you guys enjoyed this video it took me forever to get all the gameplay put all of this together so if you did enjoy it i'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button if i missed anything or there's any other weapons you would like to see me cover leave a comment down in the comment section below and of course if you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date on everything modern warfare Warfare or Call of Duty, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and make sure you have notifications on. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out. We are, we are